Hello, my name is David Chartrand. I'm the Vice President of the Métis National Council, spokesman at the present time of the Métis National Council, and also Minister of Finance. Let me start off by stating to everyone how proud we are of every citizen of the Métis Nation who are distancing in isolation of others right now. Isolation is the key fundamental solution, they say right now, by all medical experts and distancing. Washing your hands and steadily taking care of your family and staying at home. That's right now the main message that's being given by the top experts in the world. And we need to abide with that. And I know we are. Uh, the statements we're getting from our citizens province-wide to the Métis National Councils uh, and to advising us in our provincial governments that they are staying home and staying isolated. Our job now is to do everything that we can from the Métis National Council perspective and the Board of Governors is to give you as much resources and supports to make sure that stays the way it is, that isolation and distancing are fundamental and you have the tools and the essentials, the food and all the medical uh, support you have to make sure that you're safe. But this video today you're about to hear is about an update that was uh, long in coming. Uh, it's about the, of course, the financial statements of the Meiti National Council. It's about the audit that took place uh, that actually commenced in, in, in 2018. But it all stemmed, and, and it's important to understand where it came from. It all stemmed regarding a uh, disgruntled employee who left the Meiti National Council in not a very uh, positive uh, way. In fact, uh, there was a strong indications there was going to be repercussions on, on the individual and others that left with him. And uh, uh, I make it very clear uh, from our perspective, it was important for us to make sure uh, that we at the Métis National Council always try to keep uh, our information as transparent and as public as possible. However, during this time of departure, uh, it, it caused, of course, some great concerns arising from that action. Uh, the individual, disgruntled employee, uh, my understanding uh, and all the information we received today, they stole in property from the Métis National Council, different documents and financial statements of documents uh, pertaining to certain events in the Métis National Council throughout its activities and operations. But in doing so, uh, the stolen property then was not in, obviously in the full, uh, complete file. They took pieces and parts of documents and went to the RCMP uh, to try to create a very negative uh, oversight view of the Métis National Council and that there was some serious matters. If the RCMP is investigating, then obviously it's a very serious matter. Uh, however, fortunate for ourselves as the Métis Nation, RCMP did not take the uh, uh, direction to intervene and step in and start doing an audit themselves. They passed it back to the federal government who then in turn said, well, these allegations are being made, they're allegations, we need to respond to them. So it was very clear from our, of our point of view, but these are uh, uh, allegations of a disgruntled employee. So how does that relate to the government of Canada just automatically listening to that and jumping into do an audit? Well, the answer, of course, was not given to us why, but we do know this for facts, that the disgruntled employee did meet uh, with uh, President Patra and President Fro, they already had a dialogue for sure. It was raised at our meeting, uh, in fact, uh, by um, uh, President Patra and President Fro, that they were uh, concerned about the allegations that were brought to their attention by this gruntled employee. Of course, I quickly reacted to that matter as the Minister of Finance, and I indicated that I am absolutely sure that these can't be true, that these allegations are of a different nature, more of a political nature than an actual accusation of, of, of mis, misuse of funds at the Métis National Council. However, that did not uh, fit the, uh, the, the positioning of both Fro and Patra, uh, MNO Métis Nation of Ontario, Métis Nation of Alberta. Have, in fact, they started uh, pushing very hard and vigorously uh, supporting those claims. In fact, uh, at our Board of, Gov Board of uh, Governors meeting, we had in, uh, in uh, July, uh, now let me refer to my notes, make sure I'm accurate in, uh, in the concept of when that meeting took place. Um, the meeting happened uh, by the MNC July 18th. And in the minutes of that meeting, uh, they did raise again the matters of disgruntled employee. I did refer again, I indicated that I, I take all these uh, matters seriously. And I've asked our auditor that had been auditing the Métis National Council for many years, and uh, let me say this again, 
Our audits every year have been clean for years. I've been Minister of Finance for a number of years now, and our audits have been clean and verified and accepted by our Assembly and accepted by Canada. So we had always have clean audits. So we were, I was quite surprised uh, that the two presidents would still believe disgruntled employee, even though our auditor had, had, had clean audits every year throughout, had, uh, had prescribed clean audits. So I asked the auditor, I said, I want you to look back into the operations and specifically in, on the consulting contracts and so forth of these accusations that are being made. The auditor came back to a response in July, advising that she had no concerns and no significant impact that she saw that could have her as an auditor uh, address and state, yes, we have concerns, there is something wrong. In fact, she said she can't, she can't find nothing. Well, that did not satisfy the two presidents. In fact, when we asked for support of passing the March 31st financial statements, it, the majority, of course, approved it, uh, but the two presidents of Alberta, the president of Alberta and the president of Ontario, Margaret Fro, voted against it. So that led us to a position we knew we were going to have some challenging. But there was nothing we can do about it. It was on the hands of Canada. So Canada then uh, wrote to us on August 2018, indicating that they have now hired Ernest & Young to take over the aspects of an audit, an independent audit, uh, signed by Canada, uh, completed in turn by the directions of Canada, that they will come into the Métis National Council to look at the disgruntled allegations by the employee, disgruntled employee allegations made on the misuse of funds at the Métis National Council. That matter, in fact, uh, our meetings took place with Ernest & Young in Canada, and I indicated as the Minister of Finance on behalf of our Métis citizens uh, across our homeland, the MNC has nothing to hide and the Métis Nation has nothing to hide. We work diligently to be as proficient as we can and as effective as we can. And so in fact, the audit was only supposed to be conducted on that aspect of the, of the complaint and the allegations made by this disgruntled employee and supported both by Margaret Fro and by Audrey Patra. Well, let me tell you what happened. In fact, I told Canada, you go one step further. You can look at anything you want at the Métis National Council. You take any file you want and you look beyond the contracts and the allegations. Look at the entire Métis National Council. We have nothing to hide and we're not concerned. And the Métis National Assembly has guided us truly throughout and supported our direction as Minister of Finance and the Métis National Council and approved all of our audits. So the Métis National Council, the General Assembly of the Métis National Council have nothing to hide. So they in fact expanded the audit and made it quite large. So we were we were okay with it. It took a lot of interference in our time. It did affect us. We were short staff. Uh, there was gaps in, in, in movements back and forth. So it started in July, of course, of 2000, August of 2018, and just concluded this week. And I'm proud to say, uh, and, 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 and I think we should all be proud as Métis Nation citizens, the Métis Nation governments, uh, that I have here the audit of Ernest & Young. I have the complete audit which is sent now to the Board of Governors and sent to the General Assembly at large. And let me, let me read this conclusion. This is the decision of an independent, Ernest & Young, one of the biggest companies in North America, who said, based on the work completed to date, we do not identify any evidence to substantiate the concerns, the allegations raised regarding consulting contracts and, or for IT services. And they basically stated again at the conclusion CERNA funding, as a result of MNC's procedures, this is outside the contract now of the allegations, CERNA's funding as a result of MNC's procedures, recording record keeping and certain relationships and payments to MNC's primary consultants, we did not identify any unsupported or ineligible expenditures which require recovery of CERNA funds from AT National Council. We have, again, as we have had for year after year, a clean audit, and this is again by a three year, going back three years, looking at hundreds and hundreds of documents. Yes, we're not perfect, I guarantee you that. We, they say we should have a better voucher system, you should have a better record, record keeping system, your filing system should be better. There's other things that you should be more efficient, proficient on. That we understand, Every usually auditors usually come with good recommendations based on experience, but sometimes they come with recommendations that you can't afford. But, however, those recommendations are taken seriously by the Métis National Council and we actually started implementing them as we speak. I did make a promise to the Board of Governors. I, during the allegations, as you know, many allegations have made public now by all three now of the Tri-Council, we'll call it, because that's what they call themselves, the Tri-Council. 
which is now Glenn McCollum, is the president of Saskatchewan, had made statements and accusations pertaining to this audit being undertaken by Canada, and stating that they wanted and, and claimed that it was a dysfunctional Métis National Council and matters of misuse of funds happening there at the National. Basically, that's the end of their, kind of the context of their message, that there was mismanagement happening and financial dysfunctional. In fact, they wrote a letter to Canada claiming that they should seize all funding to the Métis National Council and that they, in fact, demanded that they want answers to these issues, which I said I cannot give you answers until the audit's complete. I made a promise to them. I said, once this audit's done, which is now done, we will call a Board of Governors meeting. Well, a lot has changed since that demand from them, now that there's a clean audit. We've asked for a Board of Governors, the President Clement Chartier. Again, I want to express his gratitude to, as the President, to the finding of the audit. I want to make it very clear. President Chartier called the meeting now, of April 23rd, to happen, to discuss the Métis Nation of Ontario situation. Of course, it's causing great divide in our nation. For those that don't belong, <laughs> believe in the Métis Nation for sure. The ones that believe in the Métis Nation, there's no divide there whatsoever. But very clearly, the Métis National Council said, let's have this meeting. We'll talk also about Ernest & Young, this audit. I made a, we made a promise to you. We'd call it. They wrote back to us saying they're not coming to any meeting unless Ontario is there to vote on itself. Now, my friends at home, if, that was, if this was such the pivotal issue that they were writing to Canada to cut our funding to hurt the Métis National Council, I remind everybody for a second, while this is all happening, where these presidents are still attacking the Métis National Council, and this is all starting in 2018, while we're negotiating 2 point something billion with Canada, that all of us now have been the benefactors of, and the Métis Nation, as first time in history, has had such a massive transfer of resources. And these multi-million dollar agreements are continuing to this day. And imagine for a second, if Canada took the same position as those two presidents to basically stop the Métis National Council, cut off the legs of the Métis National Council without even looking at the facts. Imagine if Canada said, well, wait a second, we got a complaint here of this disgruntled employee uh, on, on their view, it's a person or legitimacy complaining. We called this disgruntled employee because we knew he left mad. So the in institution, from my view of Canada, if they would have listened and followed as the two presidents have, and just cut our legs, where would we be negotiating all these monies for, for the Métis Nation as a whole? Would we have been lucky enough to get all this money? Of course they'll say, yeah, but let me remind you, not one of them was at the negotiating table but me and the president. So I am very concerned that there's a different agenda here. There's an agenda to kill the Métis National Council. But these types of audits, I can tell you will always come from the Métis National Council. There is no doubt in my mind as Minister of Finance, no doubt in the mind of the President and the staff at the Métis National Council and President Clara Delco from British Columbia that will always have solid, honest, transparent operations at the Métis National Council. So those individuals that are trying now to hurt the Métis National Council should ask themselves, if it wasn't for the Métis National Council, would you have gotten all those hundreds of millions of dollars? Would you have been able to be successful now to actually have programs and services, whether it's post-secondary education, whether it's the future of childcare, whether it's the future of continuation of economic development housing? Would you have been fortunate to have that if you would have killed the Métis National Council in 2018? Would you have been in that position today of a positive position? You would not have been, my friends. So I am fortunate that Canada did not take that position and listen to this person of accusations and said, look, it, we will act after the audit. And now, my friends, Canada and I had discussions with Canada already, they're very pleased to the findings. They, had, I think, had no doubt themselves, but they won't say it, that MMC is a very solid institution, one with strong administration operations. We're not the best, uh, clearly. We're, we'll make mistakes like anyone else. But we do have honesty and transparency. But one thing for sure we do know, that those individuals, those presidents that attacked the Métis National Council, I hope they go back and correct it to their citizens at home and apologize, hopefully to myself as the Minister of Finance. They should have trusted for all the years I've been Minister, there's never been a scandal. They should have actually, I hope, go back and tell their Board of Governors, their Board of Directors, their Cabinets, we made a mistake. We should never listen to the disgruntled employee. 
We should have listened to the Minister of Finance. We should have supported the Métis National Council. We should have stood by the Métis National Council. We should have stood by the Métis Nation. That's what they should have done. Truly, from a fiduciary standpoint, they have that obligation, but they didn't. So my friends, I hope you rejoice like me. Rejoice as a proud Métis citizen, a proud Métis person, that you can count on your Métis National Council, you can count on the operations of, that, of the infrastructure and staff at the Métis National Council, that they are working diligently to make sure that things are honest and transparent. And again, please support the ongoing fight we have regarding COVID. I want to close off with that because that's a different war. And I encourage you, please stay at home, stay isolated, get a hold of your Métis governments and say, please give me the support I need to make sure we're there. At the MMF right now, we have a province-wide plan. Look into our website, look in the Métis National Council website. You'll find all of the things that are taking place in our, in our homeland. But at the MMF, as a president also of MMF, I'm very, very proud of my government and, and what we've been able to achieve in our operations on COVID. So again, my friends, I hope you're as proud as I am today. And I always, I always knew, without a doubt, that there was no corruption at the Métis National Council. But again, sometimes your own backyard Sometimes your own family will try to hurt you, and you, and you, don't, you ask the question why. So enjoy yourselves, and again, be proud of your Métis National Council. Be proud again that you can always count on honesty and transparency at the Métis National Council. So thank you very much, and I hope you're safe, and I hope to see you in my travels in the future. Thank you very much.